Okay, so hello guys. In today's video, I'm going to talk about buttons. First off, I'm going to just add a simple button, explain you and explain you what how to use a button. Okay, so here it is a button, and this all of this stuff is co uh, customizable stuff that I'm going to actually show you how to change some of this stuff. Uh, mainly this thing over here. Anyways, firstly, what I'm going to do is to change is to show you. How you can use a button. Okay, and to make the button X uh, make something, all I have to do is to click here in the on click, go into plus into the plus sign, and all you have to do is to find this find an object. Okay, imagine that we have the banana handler, and that that banana handler has some properties, and some of those properties we can change those properties through by clicking on the on click function. By by using the button. So right now I'm going to I'm going to go into the banana handler and into the banana handler script. I'm going to make here a, a function that actually buys you bananas per second. So public void more bananas. That's the name of it, and it will take no parameters. Okay. So what will happen in here is that the total bananas will be decreased by 5 which is the price and in return the bananas per second bananas per second will be increased by 10 so every time you press a button you will lose 5 bananas but gain 10 bananas per second so it's worth it ok let's hit save and right now the button still doesn't do anything to apply that function to it, you have to find the the, uh, the game object that had that component. So I already added it. It's this one, and we're going to go into the banana handler script and find that function. More bananas. Here it is. Okay, and now hopefully every time I I press the button, you'll see that the number of bananas decreases and the number of bananas per second increases. And of course, like that, actually, that also works by touching. As you can see, and that's it. Okay, but for example, imagine that you have only two bananas. Then you don't want to be able to click the button, do you? No. So we're you, we're going to use this interactable field over here. It will be false whenever you have you don't have enough bananas to buy this. Anyways, to do that, first we are going to have to create a, a reference to the button in the script. So, public button uh, by something. And here in the update function, we want to make to change that uh, interactable field. So we can put it here in the top. Okay, so if the total banana bananas are smaller. Then five, which was the price that we met that we set here. Then we want that buy something button, so buy something dot interactable to be equal to false. Else, oh, else we wanted to make it true. Okay, something like that. Uh, now I'm going to change the banana, this bananas per second to be one, so that we can actually see it, the button way it out. And of course I have to also add the button into the buy something field. So drag the button into the buy something field. And now if I hit play, you'll see that the button is grayed out while the bananas are smaller than zero. Okay, so it's grayed out. Still grayed out, and it, when it reaches five, bam! You can actually buy. As you can see, and now it works fine. That's exactly what we want this button to do, and that's basically how a button works. Now this is a default action of a button. Now let me talk to you about the different types of events. Okay, so first we have this on-click event that is shown here, and when does this happen? Well, let me show you. Okay, so that that event happens when we click. And then when we let go of the but of the button, only then 
and that's basically the on click event but of course there's another that there's other events for instance what if you want the button to actually work when instead of just clicking and letting go just when you click the button will then do something we can actually do that all you have to do first is make sure that the, this you, that you have a, an event system you don't need to configure anything and usually when you first add a, a UI for example going to by going to game object UI and something here it automatically it autom automatically adds for you a, a canvas and an event system so you probably don't have to worry about that anyways to make the button do something just by clicking it down all you have to do is click here in add components and you're going to onto events and you, you will find an event trigger and now you add a new event type and there's a, a whole lot of events and the one that I was talking about was pointer down okay so when my pointer is down we can actually make an action happen and so let's hit plus and just like that we can configure this just like we configured that so first off I'm going to put here this to know to to make nothing happen and here we're going to do the same the very same thing banana handler we're going to put the banana handler uh, script and find the more bananas and if I hit play you'll see when I have five bananas you'll see that all I have to do is to click without letting go or whatever and something happens so if I click and I haven't let, go, let down and just executed the action already I'm going to click again I still have the button click and it has already increased the bananas per second and that's basically how you control events in buttons the last thing that I'm going to do in this tutorial is actually show you how to customize the button first you have this image and you can always cho choose to fill or not the center uh, that doesn't matter much uh, you have this menu over here because I'm not going to explain everything to you this will show you what all of those components of the image are anyways I recommend this to be always sliced and now I'm going to show you how to change the source image and how to make custom source images I have this button here that I'm going to import right now okay this is the new button and I'm going to put that button onto that sprite and as you can see it's like this and it's not very appealing but whatever and uh, notice these guys this is our button now but if I stretch it all the way you can see that this white part is now very very big instead of how small it was before but there's a way to configure that uh, so that the this white part over here on the bottom and all the other parts will get will have the same size no matter the button is big small or whatever okay so let me show you how to do this and we're going to actually have to change the, the sprite itself so I'm going to into the sprite editor and the way that the button works is that it it, it divides the, the, the sprite into nine parts which are the four corners the four sides and the, the center oh there you go like so and this is how a, a properly a button is properly uh, configured okay so the the sides okay so the sides can stretch but not like this only in the correct direction for example this this side will only stretch to the sides this to the to the do bottom and top this one to the sides and this again to the bottom and top the corners will never change the corners will be all uh, always the same it will it, it will not change and the and the middle will will stretch horizontally and vertically okay so let's hit apply let me show you how this new button looks okay so I'm going to click on the button to make sure that that thing that new button is applied I'm going to click on one other thing and going back to button okay and now if I drag it down here if I, if I drag it if I click and drag here you can see that the bottom part is doesn't change see it has always the same uh, height or whatever that is and if I drag in here also the side parts don't change its thickness and that and that guys is how to configure a button there's another there's other stuff like in here which is the transitions of course and you can change which button sprite you have in here according to that or you have the color tints or none or animations which is basically 
uh, regular animations like we did with the banana for example anyways I'm going to do like this like this you also have this uh, navigation field which actually works pretty much like say I'm in, in this page and I'm clicking there so that's fo focused and by hitting tab I'm going to focus something else so if I tab it has focused something else and if I keep hitting tab it will focus both buttons and links and whatever that are below it and that navigation part is set to automatic but if it isn't you can actually configure what buttons go where if you focus if you focus it by pressing tab but because we are in mobile that's not very needed and basically that's it for today guys thank you for watching and see you in the next tutorial